so hey family how so before we get into the rest of this video i wanted to stop by really quickly and tell you guys about this amazing amazing jewelry company i was actually browsing the internet looking for something for my little brother because you guys know he went away to college and i miss him so much i wanted to find him something that held some type of sentimental value and I ended up not only finding something for him, but something for me as well. I came across a company called Faith Heart, and I knew I needed to collaborate with this company like now. I want to show you guys what I got for him and also what I end up getting for myself. I ended up coming across this chain and I knew this was the perfect gift for him. Let me show you guys this chain. This is a stainless steel cross shield necklace for men. It reads, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take a stand against the devil's schemes. Ephesians 6.10. I think this chain is absolutely amazing. I'm so happy I bought it for my little brother. I love the chain that it came with. It's beautiful. It's thick. I love how weighted the chain is. Like It really it has a little weight to it. And I tell you, this is like a must-have gift. It is absolutely beautiful. Oh, I had to get something for myself. I actually got two things for myself. I don't know if you guys are aware, but I'm sure many of you are. I suffer from anxiety. And with my anxiety, I have certain tics. So when I'm nervous, when I'm overwhelmed, anything that triggers my anxiety, I will bite my nails or I need something to flicker. Like, no matter what it is, I need to flick it because it calms my nerves. When I tell you I fell in love with this item, I fell in love with it. While scrolling the website, I found this ring. Let me tell you why this ring is absolutely amazing to me. This ring is a stainless steel fidget spinner ring. It's great for anxiety. The color of it is actually called color. It's perfect to get you through stressful and overwhelming situations. I think this is by far one of my best items like this. If you see me in all my videos, I have not taken it off my finger. This is great for the way my anxiety is set up. I love this. Another gift I picked out for myself on the website is this bracelet. Let me introduce you guys to this bracelet really quickly. This is the St. Michael's Charm Bracelet. It has good luck crosses combined with the St. Michael's metal design. It's beautiful. Faith Heart is really a game changer. For them to create jewelry to keep people close with their culture, with their upbringing, to keep people in tune with their faith, I think that was just something super, super creative. I love that the jewelry is high quality. I don't take this off at all. I bathe with this on a million times. My little brother does not remove his chain. Nothing has faded, nothing has changed. It's not uncomfortable. The price is really affordable. They even have discounts on their website. There's also a discount code included in the bottom. This is something that I highly, highly recommend. I think it's great for gift giving, especially if it's like an anniversary or as a wedding gift, as a thank you gift. If there's anything on this website that I recommend you purchase is this ring. I'm telling you, this is something that you absolutely need. Click the link directly down in the description box below. Check out Faith Heart Jewelry and definitely pick you up an item. Let's continue on with this video. Well, no, we were supposed to be doing our like everyday tackle something, right? I'm not in the mood today. I could have edited this video and I could have made it seem like I cleaned out a closet or cleaned out my cabinet. I, I could have absolutely made it seem that way. But y'all know, that ain't my style. <laughs> That's not how I give it up. That ain't me. I, I don't give y'all false reality. So we not doing that, friend. We not doing that, okay? I didn't do it, period. I had a lot going on today, so I didn't do it. But what I did do is, go through my dms and i seen that people were asking me questions like and it's unrealistic for me to answer them sometimes like sometimes they're really long extensive questions and i don't want you guys to think i'm ignoring you also let me be very clear i will never put your name out there i will always keep you anonymous i will never tell your business and they know it was you i'm not that girl but I feel like if I speak about it on a public platform, you watch me and you'll get the answer to your question. You never know. Someone else may have the same question as well. So instead of me like answering you individually or mistakenly ignoring you, I said, let me just give it to you here. So I'm going to go through my DMs and like the first four or five people I see, friend, y'all don't want this video to be 10 hours long. 
I don't care what it is, I'm gonna answer it, okay? I don't, okay, let's open up some DMs. Let's open, let's, let's open, let, let, let's open. We gonna get straight into it. Okay, what would you do if your significant other had a baby on you? Would you stay? <laughs> uh, no. Um, I wouldn't even stay if my significant other looked at another bitch. Because clearly your attention is elsewhere. Get the f*** out my face. You know how people be like, well, mistakes happen. Well, what kind of mistake was that? What, what was you doing that you mistakenly dropped your penis in somebody else's drawers? How did it happen? Tell me about it. Some things are a mistake. I don't care how you try to put it. No, it was done on purpose. It was a choice. You chose to do it and you did it. There's no, how do you mistakenly cheat on me? T no, tell me. Like, oh shit, she dozed off. My balls ended up in her mouth. I don't know how gets me every damn time. No, there's no way to, those aren't mistakes. There's no excuse behind it. So absolutely not. Friend, girl, next question. What would you do if the person you're with lose their job? Well, that's normal. I'm going to stick beside them. Everybody goes through hardships. I would want somebody to stick beside me if I go through something. The problem is y'all confusing the two. Sometimes you meet a nigga and he don't got a job. And then he get a job. And when he lose that job, you expected more of him. Well, when you met him, you knew his potential. Because he didn't have it. So then he got it for a little bit, he lost it, and you wonder why he acting regular again and I can't put up with this. It's because, baby girl, when you met him, that's who he was. You fell in love with his potential, not him. So you got him living up to expectations that you set for yourself. That nigga never said, never said I'm a working man. When you met me, I was unemployed. So I got employed for a little bit because this is what you, you expected out of me, and now I'm unemployed again, and I'm sitting there playing the PS5 that you purchased me in all the games, and you're bad. What are you bad for? This is how you met me. What you wanted better for me? I didn't even want that for myself. <laughs> Clearly. That's why when you met me, I didn't have a job. So I think sometimes, you know, we confuse the two. Don't get it confused, friend. Next question. Let's find them. Okay, now. The next question is, what would you do if you found out one of your daughters were sexually active? I, I can only answer this coming from my standpoint. So my daughters are at the ages of 10, 12, and 14. I lost my virginity at the age of 13. Whew, shocker, right? Knocked you off your fucking feet, took you back, right? I know, Lord. Yes, that's what happened. I feel like I wouldn't approve of it. I wouldn't condone it, but I'm also, not in denial these kids now my daughter's 14 years old she looks 18 body of an 18 year old maturity of an 18 year old i am very 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 open with my children i don't put it in baby language teenage turns textbook turn, nah i give it to them straight no chaser because guess what if i don't somebody else will and I just want to make sure they're learning the correct thing. So I tell my daughters, like, you know what? At your age, 14 years old, I was liking boys. And, and they, you want to kiss. You want to touch. Just know when you make grown-up decisions, grown-up things happen, okay? So you choose to lay out there. You go have sex. There's a risk of STDs, pregnancy. And you ain't going to be fucking in my house. And you're damn sure ain't getting the permission to go to nobody else's house. So I don't know where you're going to do it at. But until you can hand up the grown-up responsibility behind things, you have all your life to be grown. Now, if you're 14 years old and you feel if I get pregnant, I can handle a baby. If I catch an STD, I can take myself to the doctor. I can, I can, I can. If all these things you can do, you got pop, pop it on the handstand if that's how you want it. But live it in my house and I'm going to be the one that have to bear the repercussions of your actions? Oh, you can't be grown in here. You can't be wrong. And like I said, as parents, we always want to think we're the end all be all. Like, oh, my child could never. You crazy? My daughter go to school. She come home. I be on the phone with her when she walk home. The school bus pick her up. The school bus drop. Girl, let me tell you something. Kids is like these niggas. They gonna find a way to get it done. How? Just think about how sneaky you was with your parents. 
If your parents to this day knew half the stuff, girl, I used to play how to go hump. Bitch, you wasn't on how to go seek. You find me, we hump. Like, what? This new generation? You can't even watch the Disney Channel because everybody on the Disney Channel got a boyfriend. Everybody kissing. This ain't the Kim Possible days. Uh-uh. That ain't what's on the Disney Channel. You go on TikTok, these 13-year-olds is heartbroken. Bitch, how you heartbroken at 13? They on their fifth boyfriend. What was you doing? It's promoted everywhere you go. So even if you're not that parent, they're still being exposed to it. So what I do is I do my damnness to try to teach them right from wrong. Now, whether they follow what I say, that's not up to me. But best to believe I'm going to remind them of the repercussions. Because baby girl, I'm 32 years old. I'm not going to be nobody grandmother. You could go out there and be sneaky and go against my word or do something that I don't know you doing. You, you get pregnant, you can't. I hope his mama got enough room for two or three. Cause you won't be with me. Huh? And that's just my that's just me. That's just me. You could disagree. You could be that girl. So like I said, if I found out one of my girls was pregnant, I will I will be confident in knowing that I did all that I can do as a parent to prevent it because I know I take a lot of preventative measurements. But if they did something behind my back, I <laughs> They just have to reap the consequences of it. Not me. My life not going to stop. They going to become parents. They got to find somewhere to live. They got to deal with that. Not me. Girl. And I know a lot of mother panties is in a bunch. Because I, I hang around a lot of parents on the deal. My child would never. Girl, I told my friend the other day. Girl, your daughter was cursing up a storm on that corner. Oh, not my baby. My baby would never. My daughter don't curse. Girl, she was cursing so much, she was putting curses together that it ain't make no sense. That's how bad she was cursing. But I said to each his own, who am I? Who am I, girl? Mm. Anyway, what would you, what if you're, okay? That's dyslexic, because you know I see shit backwards. What would it, okay, yeah, they fucked up. I know it wasn't me. It say, what would if? Okay. What would you do if your significant other hit your child because they was doing something wrong? Um, first and foremost, my significant other should never put their hands on my child. And not because that's not their biological anything. It's because I don't put my hands on my own children. So I'd be damned if you hit them. Now, there are households where one person is more of a disciplinary. So you may have children who scared of their dad. So mommy says, I'm going to go get dad for that ass. Or some are scared of mom. So mom says, I'm going to go get your mother. And kids know which one to play with, which one not to play with. As parents, even as co-parents, at some point we have to come to some common ground. And I think my common ground with anyone is, don't put your hands on them. I don't put my hands on them. You shouldn't put your hands on them. I don't feel that's a form of discipline. That, that... <laughs> I already told y'all once before, as a child, I used to want to get my ass whooped. Only because I know that I'm going to get away with what I just did. So I don't mind getting hit. I'll take the hit as long as I got to do what I still wanted to do. So that's like if you told me, well, I don't like when I say no to chocolate milk and you still give them chocolate milk. Even though I want to really give them the chocolate milk, I'm not going to do it. So if I tell you I don't believe in hitting as a form of discipline, even if you don't agree, I'm going to need you to respect it whether it's our child or your stepchild. That's just the way parenting, co-parenting works in general. So I wouldn't be too happy about that. What do you think about dating Haitian men? Have you dated one? Um, I've, I've never dated a Haitian man. I've only dated Americans, not because it was a preference. I don't know. Haitian men has never hit on me. I don't know. Sapase, Namboule, Vola Jolu, Kaka. Like, I don't know what I just said. But... I don't know. I, I, I don't. I, back in my days, I wouldn't have mind. How do I make my vagina smell good? Well, I, 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 well, well, yeah, yeah. I can help. I can help you with that. Let's see, friend. Let's see, friend. Come on now. I don't discriminate. I don't. Dis I don't discriminate, girl. I answer. I answer everything. Okay, now you took me for a little loop, but. I guess everything. So as you know, I'm really good with vaginas, clearly, you know, it's 
you know, what I prefer to eat. Um, so I can only know for self, and if I was to give any advice on that, this may sound a little harsh, but the first thing I want ladies to do when it comes to their vagina is make a doctor's appointment. I'm gonna need for you to make a GYN appointment because I don't care what no one told you. Your vagina is not supposed to smell like flowers, strawberries, pineapples. It, how? How? It's a self-cleaning organ. How? It should never stink. It should smell like vagina. I don't know why these women have y'all thinking, my pussy smell like mangoes. It shouldn't. What are you sticking in there for that to happen? Stop putting this out there that it's supposed, it should be smelling like vagina. And let me tell you when it should smell like vagina. It should only smell like vagina when you're in the process of getting penetrated. Because that's when your juices are flowing and things are coming out. It should not stink at all. But it should have a vagina smell. Now, if you just rubbing, touching, or smelling, it should have zero smell. Because the only smell should be the smell that comes out. And that should smell like regular vagina smell. Like, it shouldn't even be a strong stench. It should just smell like an organ. But when you touch or rub down there, that should have no scent. You shouldn't be able to wipe and smell anything. Because that should have no scent. Now, if you do have a scent, like where you pulling your panties down or when you wiping, you're smelling something, first, I need you to make a GYN appointment because people live for years with BV. People catch natural yeast infections. You could have a UTI. You need to rule those things out. So if it's been over six months and you haven't been to the GYN, do that first. Rule those things out. Second thing I'm gonna need for you to do, do not be washing with nobody's summer's eve, baby. Nobody's... Uh, what is it called? Honey pot. All that? Get that out of here. I don't even care if it says sensitive. Do you smell that? I don't even like the way that smells. I don't want my vagina to smell like that. You know what, you know what natural vagina smells like? This is, if you got this in your house, get up, pause this video, put some on your hands and smell it. That's what your juices to smell like when it's flowing. That's the that's what vagina smells like. If you got a vino body wash in your house, the regular Aveeno baby body wash, if you got that in your house, stop this video right now, put it on your fingers and smell it. That's exactly what your vagina should smell like. That's vagina. If you'll smell any different than that when your juices is flowing, go to the doctor, something wrong. That's what vagina smells like. Me personally, I wash between my legs with Aveeno. And once a month after my cycle, I wash with llama soil. If you don't know what llama soil is, baby, if you know, you know, okay? I know some women, especially my Dominican women, y'all like to wash with it every day. I, I, I don't, because that thing make you feel like a peppermint patty. Peppermint patty. But it keep that thing fresh, especially after your menstrual, you know, all that. You done cleaned all the gook and the gunk out of there. We just want to use some llama store once a month. Other than that, I wash my baby Aveeno down there. And let me tell you something. Take it from me, friend. This thing is edible. Okay? Edible. Because that's all it does is get ate. So I make sure this thing is A1. Bitch, my heart will stop. My hair will fall out. My lungs won't be good. My brows will not be done. I will have an ear infection, an eye infection, a nose infection. But that will be great. Okay? That is my number one priority. Okay? Bitch, I have a stomach ache. I don't give a fuck. Lungs, that's right. <laughs> okay. I'm dragging it. It's the truth. Listen. So we got it clear. We're going to make us a GYN appointment. We're going to stop washing with the Summer's Eve. Anything that smells like roses. Anything with any type of fragrance. Anything of any, 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 anything of any, anything. We're not doing it. We're not washing with it. We're not going to do it. Okay, we're not doing that. If you in the shower and your shower head comes down and you had a really, really rough day, all you gotta do is shh, shh, water. Shh, shh. Nothing else should be going in that hole. The hole, no. Water. The outside of everything, you take your vino, scrub that. You should not be washing your cooch with your hand. Friend, that ain't it. No, you should not 
be washing your cooch with your loofah, your little sponge. You should. That's rough on your skin. Imagine how, it, baby, get you a white washcloth, put that Aveeno on there with some hot water, and get that girl. <laughs> he gonna think you got some creme brulee. <laughs> that thing gonna be so fresh. And when you getting out the shower, you shouldn't be lathering bath and body on it, baby. There's no way, cause you think your nigga like that. He's dumb. You really think when you open your leg, it's supposed to smell like sun kiss, moonlight. It's not. You fucking up your pH balance, taking that Victoria's Secret, rubbing that lotion right there for that to smell good. What I do like to do on days where, like, you know, it's about to go down, I take me a drop. Literally, I have a little squeezy tube. I take a, a drop of coconut oil. And I lather that thing up because I like it to be real pretty and bold and shiny when she look at it. How you like that? But that thing be fresh. All you need is a vino, a white washcloth. And if you go to the bathroom right now, you like, nah, my, my funky, funky jazz. Like, it's funky, funky. And I can't get to the GYN like right now, but it's funky. Get you a boric acid pill. Straight boric acid. Nothing mixed with nothing else. Just boric acid. Boric acid. That's baby girl. I ain't tell you to dush. I ain't tell you. You better not be dushing. I don't care if grandma said throw the dish out. Just put vinegar and water in it. That ain't good for you, girl. Boric acid. Stick one or two of those tablets in you. It's going to reset your vagina back to one. Last but not least, before we move on, you're going to hate to hear this, friend. But take it from your, your good friend. I'm your best friend. I'm your sister. So it's coming from a place of love. That nigga is throwing off your pH balance. He's smoking weed and drinking Henny all day and nothing in you. And you wonder why your shit is a little rank. What do you think? He's eating Chinese food six days a week. The nigga eats macaroni and chicken nuggets all day. <laughs> the oil you mix with the weed and the Henny, what do you think? His nut is tainted. And then he put it in you. And then you let it simmer. What you think it's gonna smell like? It's gonna be funky. Tell him to start. Next question. Last and final question. I was in an abusive relationship with my kid's father for seven years. I finally decided to leave in 2015 and move to a whole different state. Years later, I'm still single because every guy I meet acts like him in some way. What advice can you give me? Frank, we, we talking as friends right now. It ain't nothing about the men and it's everything about you. That's like me. If I keep every man I get is he they got all something in common to this that I don't like, but I keep getting the same men and I, it's something about you that's attracting these type of men. Cause let me tell you something, as women, we are very, very smart. I don't care how dumb you try to play. You are very smart. You could meet a nigga and talk to him within the first 10 minutes. You know he ain't the one for you. But he cute, he got a Lexus, and his print was big, and he had on gray sweats that day. So you thought, I could look past this. You saw the red flag when you first started talking to him. Because you, you made it up in your mind already. That you wanted him to be everything you wanted him to be. You're very smart. You know why you keep attracting these people. So it's something about you. We're going to do some self-reflecting, some self-love, some self-evaluation. And what is it about me that keep attracting these type of men? There you go, friend. You got your answer. Family, I love you. I appreciate you. I adore you. Let me know in the comment section below if you like these little chit-chats of what would Jasmine do. Y'all already know tomorrow we're getting back to the basics because y'all love. Y'all y'all be y'all take me as I am. Because y'all like when I cook, y'all like when I clean, y'all like when I chat. Y'all like to, for me to show y'all New York City. I'm going to give it to you all, friend. Today was one of our chill days. Tomorrow, back to business. We're cooking, we're cleaning, we're being mommies, we're being badass bitches. We're doing all of that, okay? So until tomorrow, family, I'll see you then.